Hello and welcome to my F122 driver career mode here today for the second part of season 2 for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. In a career mode with driver transfers has sort of become quite realistic. In the last few days at the time of recording, Sebastian Vettel has just announced his retirement, which of course he has in his game with Fernando Alonso. He's going to Aston Martin, which is a bit weird because we moved from Alpine to Aston Martin, so maybe you not so watching my career mode, I don't know. But weirdly, it's become realistic. Anyway, on to Jeddah. Seen enough of YouTubers that they have pretty good races, that's the only reason why I want to do it. And we're going to start the race after qualifying P13, so let's get into it. We're here today on the shores of the Red Sea in the lower Hejaz Mountains to visit one of the newest circuits in the Formula One calendar, Jeddah, home to what we all hope is going to be a thrilling Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So let's take a look at a topographical map of the Jeddah Street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, and Hamilton, Sonoda, Magnussen, Perez, and Mick Schumacher. Gasly, Albon, Brown, and Fernando Alonso. Joe, Ocon, Nicholas Latifi, and Daniel Ricciardo. Stroll, and Robert Schwartzman. Now it lights out just moments away. It's time to go down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. So it's a one-stop like it seems to be in every race this season. Lining up alongside our former teammate Fernando. Hopefully we can get him off the line. But it's very, very tight run into the first corner. Very tight. Very big pinch point. So it's been nearly at the back of the Alfa Tauri. Okay, and have to be set back start. in our great spot. But it's a good qualifying by the McLaren. Let's go to the five red lights and they're out and we're underway here we're in Saudi Arabia. Everyone waving just to try and get a tire temperature and to find a move as we go to the inside. Side by side with Fernando Alonso, who side by side with the Alpha Tauri. And we are going to go clean round the outside of both of them. And now, down the inside of the Williams of Albon, I believe that is. It's flooding through now. The cloud leads from George. He's got ahead of Lando. Then he's your top three in. Sergio Perez with poor qualifying. Stuck here behind Mick Schumacher. Can he find a way past? He needs to very quickly. If he can. As there's Hamilton going with move Sonoda further up the order. And as you can see, it's that four. And Perez was struggling to get past this house and we were just staying in touch as we tried to have a look at the Mexican. But he really was struggling was Perez to get past Mick Schumacher. But on lap four, heading down into the final corner, round the outside, he finally managed to get his car further enough alongside. But Mick Schumacher the house is nowhere near the Red Bull, but it's not making it easy for him. Side by side. Now, on the outside, Perez again now has to hold it back around the outside. He then has the inside line. Can Mick Schumacher get him on traction? 
You still that make sure my job at Perez has got the job done and we were just trying to stay in inside the DRS here. Now have we got the pace to get past Mick Schumacher? And the answer was no as we fell back from Mick Schumacher after that. And we left defending Alonso and Gasly wheel to wheel with our former teammate. Well he's got us Fernando as we try to get back down the inside but we have the Avatari on our inside. If we do the old switcheroo on around the outside of Gasly we retain the position. Gasly's still there on the outside but eventually he does have to back out of it. But we have unfortunately lost out to Fernando and this would just kind of become our race defending those behind Ricardo. Nowhere near his teammate, a bit like real life really. But Gasly on the back of us now can and get past us. We've got to hit this Aston Martin very, very wide. As I mentioned in the last episode, this car is absolutely horrendous through high speed corners. And that didn't fill me with a lot of hope coming into this race as Ricardo gets past Gasly and now. Esteban Ocon in his second race for Alfa Tauri. He's getting all involved. We send him round, back round the outside off Daniel Ricciardo to get the job done and re retake that position. This is a very, very big fight now for P12. This time now Ricciardo looks to have got the job done on us. But we're still there in his DRS but we did, we couldn't get the job done into the final corner and now we've fallen a little bit too far back but it's not far enough back as we dive on to the inside we go deep and that is a bit of a dodgy overtake that one but who cares, Ricardo we licked the stamp and sent it on him but Ricardo is coming back at us now and this time he won't well have, well, well have got the job done on us is now we're going to be left defending Gasly um, Ocon Ocon's got past Gasly somewhere there's now Ocon to our outside who we replaced at Alpha Tower um, at Alpine at the start of this career mode we have to defend him we do stay ahead but now that's let Ricardo get away we're going to have to lick the stamp and send it again on him and that is exactly what we're going to do but he chops the door and slams it firmly shut going into time one we had we went too far to the inside of the trap we had a very tight line and that has allowed Ricardo to stay ahead of us and now we're in a battle with Esteban Ocon Pierre Gasly's dropped back massively here and Ricardo is gone just like Mick Schumacher but now Esteban Ocon round our outside he gets the job done but we're going to send it back down the inside into the final corner and we stay ahead of Esteban Ocon there this is allowing Gasly and Co to get back in this race as this is Yuki Tsunoda retiring from the Grand Prix that's another reliability issue for Alpine and um, Alonso retired in Bahrain and Sonoda has retired here two races two issues for Alpine that's why I left but also it looks like it might be a two second race curse curse for Sonoda as he retired in the second race of the career mode in Miami as well as we get done by both of the Alpha Diaries and now we're on the back of him the side by side and it looks like they may have got the job done here try not to wipe each other out front Todd is going to be looking through his, through his hands as we send it back down the inside big lock up there by Esteban Ocon and we somehow stay ahead of both us that looked very very close to the wall there by Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly sorry maybe did he just touch the barrier there he went very very wide it's through this section we go 
so hard to get that right and Gasly gets an unbelievable launch off of that corner and now we tuck back in his slipstream this is a horrible camera angle down the inside goes up on into the final corner gets the drop then as now he pits and we're on the back of him and we're gonna do a pit, pit lane overtake a very very late to re overtake the French driver how did we not touch the wall how did we not make contact with Ocon there we judged that to absolute perfection and in that process Robert Schwarzman in his Alfa Romeo has got ahead of Esteban Ocon so he's lost not one but two positions there and now if we move to try and get a tyre temperature because this is going to be crucial especially around here with the high speed corners this is how close though we were to ripping off our front right tyre and get past Ocon Monaco perfection I think you can say there as here is Robert Sportsman now on the back of it and also there Alpine's got ahead of Ocon as well so that pit stop not gone well for Ocon lost three positions as now with Robert Sportsman we're in a big big battle now Sportsman looks like he's got the job done we're going to have to try defend round the outside but Albon was on the inside can he get the job done now as we're back on the back of the of the Alfa Romeo driver and now we can just squeeze him he backs out of it and we retake P13 in this race as there there is Lance Stroll Lance Stroll to come out just behind us We've kind of accidentally pulled out the blinder for Lance as he was behind all of these and obviously us battling him has allowed allowed him to jump all of them. So accidentally we've played an absolute blinder in strategy as Swordsman tries to overtake Lance and Lance does stay ahead. Now can the Canadian get past us? I mean, he looks to be the quicker Aston Martin currently, as Schwarzman's going to come back at him, and we look to be a bit of a sitting duck here. As Schwarzman gets both of us nearly, he at least gets stroll, and now he cuts us back, heading down into the first corner. We're free wide almost, a large stroll has got both of us into the first corner Swordsman chops nearly chops off Lance's tyre and we stay ahead Swordsman did to Stroll what Ricardo did to us and now Swordsman coming back at us once again Lance is getting away here we defend the inside again don't know what's happened to the Alpha Tires in this race They've really dropped off massively in this second stint. Maybe they couldn't switch the tyres on as we were following Lance Stroll. And we re overtake our teammate because I wanted to stay in the tyre track, see if he could push us along. But he was just sat there, not doing anything. So when I had the opportunity to overtake him, I took it and we get past our teammate again. But now Lance. Obviously, his dad owns the team, so they may well pull me out of the way, but I'm not going to listen to that if they do want me to do that, especially this early on in the season as well. It's only the second race. There's Lance stays ahead of the Alfa Romeo there, and now he's in the tyre tracks of us. He's going to go to the outside, and we can't be as aggressive as we have been in this race, and Lance Stroll does do us round the outside but he has a massive moment there had a massive snap of oversteer and we just seem to pat down the inside of him and now here he comes again I'm not saying the team principal's name he would never catch me out as we were as 
Lance does get past us and now we're left defending Robert Schwartzman. And now can we rehabilitate Lance or is this job done on us? We're going to send it back down the inside but we're too far back maybe if that's uh, Ocon or Gasly or Ricardo I do send that but and they're out of the points we still don't want to have a double DNF is it's going to be a win and his first win as world champion for Charles Leclerc wins in Saudi Arabia Max Verstappen is going to come over B2 in the race opposite to what happened in the real Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and now how much is going to come home for his first podium of the season I believe and now this is George Russell and Carlos Sainz battling for B4 Sainz round the outside George on the inside who is going to finish B4 in this race it looks like Sainz has beaten George on the line Lance is away from us Schwarzman though no, is on the back of us and now to the outside everyone's harvesting energy to the inside though we stay ahead and we are going to finish ahead and in P14 They've delivered an outstanding performance today under intense pressure to take a well-earned victory here at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I'd say it was down once again to good consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. at the podium you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe a world-class win for a world-class team Ferrari do it again So that's been the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Well, maybe a bit of a slow burner that one bit by the it's from the life in those last couple of laps. Sainz beating George on the line. You can see now the gap in the championship. Charles Leclerc ahead of George by just five points. Level on points though with the championship after two rounds very much being shaped up to be between three drivers and in all three different teams. The constructors though, Mercedes is on top after the two rounds. That's been your Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and this video. Hope you enjoyed it. A bit of a slow burner in terms of race. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next race where we head down under to Australia. Goodbye.